Hello, everyone. Please listen to episode five. Qi Mei didn't know her bridegroom was Tian Yi. She waited so long and fell asleep with her head cover on. The next morning, she found no one in the room and suddenly saw the handkerchief she gave to Tian Yi years ago. She could not wait to read the words on it and realized that she was married to Tian Yi. But it was too late. On the third day after Tian Yi left home, again bandits came. They robbed all the valuable things and killed both Tian Yi's parents and all the servants. Qin Mei was taken away for her astonishing beauty. On the way, the bandits had a lunch in an abandoned house on the roadside. They put Qin Mei in one room and locked the door. They were eating and drinking in another room. After a little while, Qi Mei heard that there was a fighting and quarreling about who was going to have her as a wife. Qi Mei felt so scared and broke the window escaping from them. She ran all the way to a forest where she met an old man cutting firewood. The old man showed his pity for her and took her home. From then on, the old man took her as a daughter and they lived a peaceful life. There was a plague broke out in the following year, and dead bodies could be seen everywhere in the street. The old man also died. Qi Mei buried the old man and had nowhere to go. Naturally, she was joining the group of people begging for food. One day, she was walking together with other beggars in the street. A royal officer sitting in his sedan chair followed by ten entourages. When the sedan chair passed these beggars, the officer opened the curtain and looked outside. He was immediately caught by the beauty of Qi Mei. He ordered them to stop and then walked up on his sedan chair. Those beggars were all kneeling down on the ground. Qi Mei was also about to kneel down, but an entourage came to her, stopped her, and said, you are so lucky. Our master takes pity on you. From now on, you will enjoy a happy life. In order to feed her stomach, Qi Mei stood up and nodded her head. On the wedding day, Qi Mei was carried by an old sedan chair, followed by a group of people playing drums and Chinese sauna. They went into a big yard. At the center of the yard, one man was wearing a broad goom's dress, and evidently she was one who met Qi Mei in the street. The sedan chair was just about to enter the main gate, but at that moment, a 50-year-old woman in colorful silk clothes dashed up and stopped them and let them enter from the side door. She was the bridegroom's wife, so the bridegroom dared not say anything and just shook his head. In the evening, the bridegroom was about to walk toward Qi Mei's room, but his wife blocked his way, and at the same time, several of his concubines came out to stop him out of their jealousy. Eventually, the bridegroom was pulled away by his wife. Early the next morning, the fat woman knocked on Qi Mei's door heavily and said, Get up! What do you think you are? Go in and get water for me. I wash my face. Qi Mei got up and started doing all kinds of work, mopping the floor, cleaning the room, washing clothes, etc. In the evening, she was very tired, and soon she went to bed and fell asleep. In the dream, she saw an old monk. The monk said, It's raining very hard. Can I sleep over for a night? She did not even get a chance to answer. Suddenly, the old monk chanted into a fat woman with a burst of loud laughter. Qi Mei was startled to wake up. She suddenly heard a loud noise from outside, and then she heard an official coming from the royal court and said, Your master is involved in a serious event. She has been put in prison already and cannot come back anymore. All the concubines were crying. 
while running to the yard and started to grab valuable things. Very soon, the bad woman broke Jimmy's door and shouted, "What are you waiting for? Don't you also want to split something? Stop dreaming! Get out of here!" Wearing the wedding dress and a phoenix hairpin plugged in her hair bun, she came out of the room and was ready to leave. The fat woman and the other concubines all came to surround her. One said, "Look how beautiful the dress our master bought for her." While seeing that, they started to put on her clothes. The fat woman took the chance to take away her phoenix hairpin. She may immediately cover her hair bun, and the silver hairpin given by Tian Yi was kept safe. Qi Mei was still wearing her old clothes and carrying a basket with her. Again, she became a beggar. Although she was poor, she was still as beautiful as before. In the street, she was surrounded by a group of people. They looked at her and started talking about her. A middle-aged woman said, "Poor young girl, how come she became a beggar?" A young man said, "Look." How beautiful she is! If I have money, I will marry her. A old man sighed and said, "What kind of world is this?" At this time, someone suggested, "Hi, do you know how to sing? Sing a song for us." Chi Mei said, "I never sang a song before, but I heard a song when I was little." A fifty-year-old man with arho, a Chinese instrument, in his hand, squeezed in the crowd, sat on a chair, and said, "Do you still remember the lyrics? I can play arho for you." In the beginning, she felt a little shy. She raised her head and saw Timu geese flying to the south, and then she started singing, "The sky is blue and vast." The geese are flying to their homes in the south, drifted around, and I have nowhere to go, only expecting my brother to come home. What happened next? Please listen to episode six.